seed, so he stays there to protect that seed. Right. Amen? Amen. And the only way that seed can come out is if you go willingly and let someone take it out of you. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Brother. He promises to protect you and deliver you. John chapter 10, verse 28. John chapter 10, verse 28. Uh -huh. And I give unto them eternal life. He gives unto you what? Eternal life. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And they shall never perish. They shall, shall never perish. No. I like to be able to say, people say, man, you're too cocky, you're bold. And I tell people, now nah, I don't care if I die. Kill me because I can't die. Right. Because you kill me, I still get everlasting life. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Even when I lose, I still Amen. win. When y'all beat us in cards, we still win. <laughs> because the Bible tells me he always causes me to try and Christ Jesus. Always. 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 So we just played it back. What happened? We won. It's a promise. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying. The promises of God are good to the point where even when you lose your life, meaning you give your old self over, mm. you still actually live because it gives you a new life. Jesus. Thank and then he protects you with that. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Psalms chapter 34, verse 17 through 19. Psalms chapter 34, verse 17 through 19. We're just rereading the promises. I'm just giving you a reason why you can believe that God wants to be with you and why things can change in your life, why you can be saved. Amen. I'm just giving you the promises. Psalm 34, verse 17 through 19. Now everybody in here is singing, tell me something good. Right. It would be a shame if I did tell you something good and you left here and didn't believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're crying out, tell me something good. Right. And then you don't even take it. Right. So I'm telling you something good. Right. Amen? Amen. Psalm 34, verse 17 and 19. Not eight, don't read verse 18. Good. Psalm chapter 34, verse 17 and verse 19. Uh -huh. The righteous cry, mm -hmm. and the Lord hear, mm -hmm. and deliver them out of all their troubles. Some of their troubles. All their troubles. Half their troubles. All their troubles. Now, I'm going to believe every word. Amen. So if I cry out, you're going to hear all my words. Oh. See, some of us think God's not hearing us. He knows when you're going through that pain. He knows if you'll cry out. Jesus. Some of us are too prideful to cry out. Mm. Cry out. Yeah. And the promise is, he'll hear you, right? All of them. All of them. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I like to get in the shower and cry. Amen. I get in the shower and just cry, let it roll on me, and think about whatever is on my heart that's too painful, whatever the situation is, and I cry it all out. But I like to get in the shower for one because I believe, like, like when I'm going there, hopefully you get in the shower and you wash. So I'm going there to get clean anyways. Amen. But the water is pouring out on me is representation of the Holy Ghost pouring out on me, cleansing me while I'm calling out to God. Amen. That's why he needs me right in the shower every single time. Amen. Praise God. tell you. So you find a place in your prayer closet or wherever you go, and you cry out to God, and he'll deliver you from the trouble that you're crying out to. He hears everything. He He's is. compassionate. Yes. He knows when you're going through something. Mm. He went through worse than what we all could go through. Yes. So he does know what you're going through. Right. And it's not too late. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 19. Verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many. Hold up now. Hold on. If I come to God, I, I, I just heard that. You said I'm going to have some afflictions. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You still gonna go through some stuff here. Right. Would you with God or without God, you're going through something. Right. Many of the afflictions of the righteous good. But the Lord delivered him out of them all. Some of them. All of them. Half of them. All of them. Wait a second here. Whatever I face, every time affliction comes, it don't matter. Don't matter. He promised me, man, I'm gonna get through it. He said all of them. That's what he well, said. I don't know, Pastor. I heard you going through this, and man, I, man, if it was me, I would already kill somebody. <laughs> But I know God promised me yes. I don't have to do nothing. Yes. He's going to do it. He's going to deliver me out of all my afflictions, oh. all my troubles. Oh. That's a promise oh. that I can hold on so I don't lose my mind. Jesus. Who's your name? Say, tell me something good. Tell me something good. Oh, you're getting low. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. We're telling you that the promise of God, he promised to protect you and deliver you. He Amen. promises to protect you and deliver you. Proverbs 24, 16. I believe his brother Nick brought this up last night, I think it was. Proverbs 24, verse 16. Amen. Let everybody get there so they can see the promise that God has from laying in your lap. Jesus. You ever hear that? Man, it's laying in your lap and you don't want it. Mm. It's laying right in your lap. Mm. Anything, I know you try to go to sleep at night, all you're going to hear is, tell me something. <laughs> you're going to hear that. Amen. 
<laughs> Amen, brother. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16, right? Yep. Let's go. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. Listen to this. For a just man falls seven times. Hold on. A just man can fall. Wow, that's what it said. Seven times. Seven times. A just man falls seven times. Seven times. Go ahead. And rise it up again. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Amen. God promises us. When we are with him, even if we fall, we rise up again. We rise. Even when you fall, so when you do fall, mm -hmm. God promises to pick you right back up. Yes, he does. The proof of the fact that when you fall, he's going to pick you back up is the resurrection itself. Jesus. Christ went down, but he came back up. Came back up. So when we fall, mm -hmm. he's going to bring us right back up. Hallelujah. You go to sleep and lay down, but you always wake back up. Yes. You're living out the resurrection every day. All you have to do is now believe in it in every part of your life. Amen. Yeah, I fell. God says, "Don't get me back." Yes, God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Let's move on to the next promise. What number we on? Six. Number six. God promises to show up in your life when you seek Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. God promises mm. to show up in your life when you seek Him. Yes. Amen. Are you hearing? Amen, brother. He promises to show up in your life. Promises. When you seek him. Now God is a spirit. Uh -huh. He's supernatural. Yep. We're natural. Yep. We're not looking for nothing in the natural. Right. We're looking for something in the supernatural. supernatural. We're looking for something that we can't see. Because right. yep. faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the assurance of things that are hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. That's so right. in other words, we walk by faith, not by sight. sight. So I don't care what I see. I'm only going by what God said. Right? Right. So he's a spirit, I can't see him. But he said, I can have that hope to see him. Amen. He said, okay, if it's the hope and it's the evidence of something I can't see, that means what I can't see that I go after eventually has to appear. Has to. Are you hearing me? Amen. So if I'm seeking after God, praying to God, talk to me, God, talk to me, God, talk to me, God, I need help, just tell me something. Tell me something good. And I'm praying I'm, and I'm asking, you will begin to hear him. Yes, he speaks. You want to see him, he'll begin to say, walk down the street real quick. Mm. Look at that bird over there. How does that bird eat? Mm. I feed it. Mm. You can see me in the fact that I'm feeding these birds. You can't explain it. Mm. How come the ocean knows when to stop mm. and never does an overflow? Mm. The scripture says, I'm the one to get the power to make the ocean stay where it's at. Right. Think about that. Why doesn't the ocean just go over the beach? Mm -hmm. It knows when to stop. Right. Because God controls that. Amen. He has so much control over things that if we would believe that, he controls whether or not you can enter into his presence. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Just a little tip for you. If you praise, that means you sing to God or you shout to God and it's not. The Bible says he inhabits your praises. Yes. The Bible says that. Yes. If we believe that. So if I sing to God, mm. he has to inhabit means to come and live yes. within my praises. Amen. So if the praises is coming from my temple mm. and it's coming out of me praises Jesus. and he inhabits, he has to come in where it's at. Right. So if I would just sing to him, he promises to come in. Yes. So whatever comes out of you, got to come in. Right. Are you hearing what I'm right. saying? Amen. It's a promise. It's a promise. I just taught you something that you might not even know I taught you. Jeez. You go home tonight and start singing to him, he will show up. So the Holy Ghost. Just sing to him. Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, mm. it's impossible to please him. Jesus. So without assurance, without having hope in the scene now, Without knowing the evidence is coming. Right. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. You must believe he is. Now, you must believe he is. You must believe he is God and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Seek him. What did I promise you? I promise you he'll show up if you seek him. Mm -hmm. So, you got to believe he is who he is. You must believe he is a rewarder. Yes. yes. God's just trying to give you something. Right. He's trying to reward you. Thank you Lord. That's what he is. Yes, he He's a rewarder mm -hmm. of those who diligently seek him. That's a promise. Amen. Read Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. Amen, brother. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. How many of you believe that he'll show up if you seek him? Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen brother. So now it's up to you. Mm -hmm. Seek him. Mm -hmm. Keep seeking him. Mm -hmm. He will show up in your life. Yes, he will. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. Mm -hmm. And ye shall seek me and find me. God says you shall seek me and you shall find me. Go ahead. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. Did you hear that? Amen. Now, 
Brother Marsu read that to you. God will speak. He said, when you seek him, you shall find him. But notice he also said it's when it's with all your heart. Right. It got to be with all your heart. But he promised you, promised. when it's with all your heart, I'll show up. Yeah. I'll show up. Amen, brother. Amen? Yeah. Hopefully in the back of your mind, you're saying, for real? Mm. For real? That's shock factor. Jesus. Are you hearing me? Yes. Luke chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. I'm going to just read it real quick. Luke chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. Luke 11, 9 and 10 says this. Luke chapter 11, verse 9 and verse 10 says, And I say unto you, so this is God speaking to you right now. I say unto you, now that's everybody in here. You got to just listen to it for yourself. I say unto you, Jesus, ask, and it shall be given to you. Cease, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks you, say everyone. Everyone. For everyone that asks you, say that's me. That's me. For everyone that asks you, say he ain't lying. He ain't lying. For everyone that asks you, receive it. Amen. He that seeketh, find it. He, to him that knocketh, the door shall be open. Uh -huh. He says, put me in remembrance. Jesus. That's a promise to you. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit. In verse 13, he says, if you are an evil person and you still know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall I give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Right. So you'll continuously ask. Mm. Believing, Believe. having a hope. Like, what is hope if it's already seen? Right. Mm. But I have this hope because he said so. Be unto me according to thy word. Mm. And it has to come to pass. Has to. Everybody in here can have the Spirit of God dwelling on the inside. Amen. If you will believe it. Believe Look at your neighbor and say, He ain't lying. He ain't lying. To tell me something good. To tell me something good. Number seven, right? Mm -hmm. We're almost done. Number seven. Amen. Listen to this one. Number seven. That's what I'm saying. Everybody can leave this building today saying, wait a second. Man. I only remember him saying this. But it's a promise. promise. It's a promise. promise man, I'm believing this no matter what anyone says. Amen. I'm believing this no matter what happened last night. I'm believing this one. Promises. He promises to hear our prayers. Mm -mm -mm. He promises. Yes. In other words, you don't have to offer no popcorn prayer. We don't have to say, man, I hope so. Oh God, please, I hope you hear me. Mm. He promises, promises to hear your prayers. Amen, brother. John chapter 14, verse 13. Amen. Everybody turn there so you can see it. John 14, 13. Because if you read it for yourself, if you go back home and read over these scriptures for yourself, you've seen them, you laid eyes on them. Now you can say, be it unto me according to your word. Uh -huh. Listen to this. John chapter 14, verse 13. God promises to hear your prayers. Go ahead. John chapter 14, verse 13. Listen. Now, when his brother Sue reads this, matter of fact, everybody close their eyes. My brother Sue reads this, listen for the spirit part behind Mark Sue's voice as if it's God speaking to you. Because it should be, because these are red words and Jesus is speaking to you. Listen to what brother Sue's saying through the spirit of God to you. So close your eyes and listen to what he's saying. John 14, 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Read it one more time, the first part. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That's a promise for you. That's a promise for you. Now, Jesus said that. We're reading it. Amen. We hear him. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, not you're going to do something, he will do. Amen. Thank you. Man, there is no way. By now, everybody should be dancing to what we're saying. <laughs> we should be in your heart. Hopefully, you're dancing because we're just like, whoa, whoa. You just said, God, whatever I ask in your name, that will you do? Jesus, amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Amen, brother. I'm holding on that promise. Mm -hmm. I'm staying pregnant with that. Matter of fact, give me twins, triplets, and all that. You're right. I'll go through all the pain that I go through to make sure that I have. Yes. Push that thing out. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. John 15, 7. John chapter 15, verse 7. John chapter 15, verse 7. Listen to the promise he says to you. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done to you. Why don't we just believe that? Forget yes. anything else that we ever learned. Uh -huh. Forget anything else that we think about in this world. Forget about all our college degrees. Forget about what anyone said. Mm. If I... If you abide in me, Jesus says, and his words is in us, 
You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. He can't lie. Remember we said, said that earlier? Yeah. Now he done said that. Yes. Now we're gonna say, yeah, I know I said that, but I'm saying no. Now he right. like us. No. But I'm saying no. You're right, man. I'm gonna be there at six o'clock, but I come at seven o'clock, but I'm saying no. He's right. not like that. He like it. He said it. He wants you to believe it, and he's gonna show it to you. Right. He's gonna blow your mind. Yes, he will. If you start praying with an attitude, and you have a right to believe the promise, he said he's gonna hear me, he's gonna do what I ask. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. It got to be according to his word. Amen. Don't go ask him to kill somebody that's your enemy. Right. Don't do all that stuff no. like that. Don't ask to hit the lottery. Right. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 24. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Everybody turn there. We're almost done. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 24. If you believe what I'm saying, say he ain't lying. Yeah. yeah. Everything I'm showing you is in the scripture. Yes, I ain't here to try to make you feel good, but I'm here to tell you something good. Amen. And it's your choice whether to believe. If you ain't feeling this, I don't know what you're feeling. In. Right. I'm feeling good. Amen. But it's the truth. I ain't tickling your ears. Right. Am I? No. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 Mark. through 24. Let's close our eyes again. Let Brother Sue read. Close your eyes. Visualize. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 24. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto the mountain, be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Mm. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye shall receive them, and ye shall have them. Open your eyes. That's exactly what he's saying to you. Amen. All those promises in three verses. Anytime he says shall. He said, first of all, I have faith in God. Mm. See, it's not on you no more. Nope. Because if we look at our own selves, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. But he said, have faith in him. Yes. Right? Amen. He said, truly I say unto you, Whosoever, say whosoever. Whosoever. So that means whosoever. Me. Does everyone know what that means? Amen. That don't mean all only you and only you and only you. Whosoever yes. shall say. Notice you got to say something. Yes. Until this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, and don't doubt. As long as you don't doubt in right. your heart. But shall believe those things which you said, mm -hmm. it shall come to pass. Yeah. If there's something in your way, in the way of your happiness, in the way of your progression, in the way of your mind, just something in the way. If you speak and say, be thou removed, I want this to happen now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. If you say that, he promised that it will be removed. Amen. That it will come to pass. Right. You're fighting depression? I got to get my new thoughts. I got to get a new way of thinking. Get it out of my mind. My past thoughts keep rolling in my mind. Lustful thoughts keep rolling in my mind. Hating, unforgiveness is rolling in my mind. I rebuke that mountain right now in the name of Jesus. Name and I want a clear mind. Yes. If you ask for that, it has to come to pass. According to his word. His word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I'm so sure that if you do this, if you believe in these eight promises, and you go practice these things, if you can come back and say, no, nah, this stuff don't work, I can say, all right, go ahead and leave. Don't ever listen to the Bible. Right. I'm not sure. Amen. Because if something don't happen, it must be you not just believing. Right. Because all it is, he's saying, I said it, believe it. Right. Ain't that how Mary got pregnant? Yeah. Have you ever seen anyone else get pregnant who's never had sex before? Nope. In that situation at that time? Nope. Never. Nope. Supernatural. Can't happen. Impossible. But nothing's impossible with God. Yes. So, if he performs something like that, you're just asking, hey, give me the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, give me a new mind. Amen. Hey, let me be loved. Amen. Hey, let me find new friends. Amen. Hey, let me find a job. Hey, let me hear from you. Jesus. That's all you're saying. That's simple to him. Right. But we got to believe the promise. Believe. Right here what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. Last one. Right, right? Yeah. Say, tell me something good. Tell me something good. God promises to give you and I power to overcome. Uh -huh. Power to overcome. overcome. Could you imagine if you just walked through Willing or Ferry? You can go to Ferry. And walk up to someone who's sitting on a corner holding a king cobra, drunk mm -hmm. out of their mind, mm -hmm. and you tell them, God says he can give you power to overcome. Yes. 
How many people you think that actually walks up to someone and tells them they got power? Right. Probably never. Right. So how can they ever know the truth? They never, their truth is, I have to do this. Right. I have to. I've been going 15 years. I can't stop. I can't live without it. I tried stopping before, and I go through my situations, and, and my body gets a call out. But they didn't know that God said he'll give you power to overcome it. Oh. Think about that. Right. All these people that's depressed, all these people that's locked up in mental homes and stuff, they, don't, they hand them pills. Right. They don't tell them there's somebody that can give you power to overcome this. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I'm just telling you the truth, and you make you free. Oh, yes, you do. Amen, brother. If we would tell them the word of God, are you hearing me? Amen. He promises to give you power. According to Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he'll give you power. Power. Due to his power. Amen. Dynamite. He'll give you power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Write it down. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. says, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And then I give you power over all of the enemy, the scripture says. Yes. Not power to break this habit, but still have this habit. Mm. He said, I give you power over all the enemy. All of them. Over your enemy physically or spiritually. spiritually. I give you power to tread upon. That means put it underneath your feet. All the spiritual problems you're having, God gives you the power. Mm. I'm not talking against rehabs. You can go to a rehab, but I'm saying you can come, look at this word, believe this word, walk in it, and everything will go right. Amen. Amen. That's true. We got proof we have people to come through this ministry. That was in rehab and said, hold on, let's not try this rehab. Let's try what this word says. Right. Read the word, believed it, went home, shook for two weeks, getting ready to die, boom, and ain't touched another pill ever again. Amen. Because he believed, and the word of God got pregnant with it, stuck with it. Yes, yes any woman here has been pregnant is going to tell you there's going to be some pains going on. Amen. So if you keep going into pain, but listen, I ain't, I ain't a woman, but I know what my wife went through. So... Boom! About four months, you could just punch in the thing. I'm sure that hurt in the ribs. Right. But at the same time, that made you happy. Right. You realize something's in there. Right. So when you first hear the word of God, you might leave here and go through some struggles and pain, but you ain't breaking. Yeah. It's because you're pregnant. Right. You're pregnant. Right. With the promise. Amen. You got power to get through anything. Right. It's not necessarily going to take you out of it, right. but it'll get you through it. Through it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen.